Hey everyone, this is Lucky7DX, welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. It's time for the final dungeon, because in the last episode we resurrected the Cobble Kingdom on the Isle of Rune. Yes, yes. And uh, we're now here at Muto's Temple, we need to go uh, speak to him, get the last, uh... We only need to defeat the monster inside the temple because it's uh, it's uh, disturbing his sleep. And then we have to win him over and he'll give us the Aquanine and we'll have our final, final part of the, uh, of the final pure metal and we can actually make our sword. And save the world! So, we, we're basically gonna start off with a, a puzzle. This is very puzzling sort of dungeon. It's, although on the end, it's kind of unremarkable in the end. It gives us two hints. One for this switch, which is, says bombs by time. You'll notice each switch will uh, cause a, uh, whatchamacallit to appear, a bridge. But each of these switches are also timed. So, it's, a, it's one of those time puzzles. We're starting right off a puzzle. Just face first in the dungeon, all of a sudden it's like, hey, it's time for a puzzle! And this much as he who chooses the hidden path will cross in time. So two different puzzles, we'll go ahead and take care of the uh, easy one first, which is this one. So you might be like, oh, gotta hurry across this path, but as you can see, the time for the right bridge is extremely short. It doesn't seem like it could ever be possible to make, and that time's a bit longer, but still not that long. So uh, the bomb's my time one, you can actually use this for uh, to benefit for, for uh, this one too. There's also a, there's lots of hidden things, but that being said, it says take the short path, the hidden short path. Which is, in fact, this bomb wall right here, which, as you can see, is uh, extremely, extremely, it even gives you bombs there. Uh, it's a drastically shorter path, so we don't even need to hit the uh, the switch there. We just need to go ahead and run, avoid the floor here, and you can make across the bridge in time and solve the first of the time puzzles. We need to do both of them for reasons that you'll see very soon. Uh, for now, we can go ahead and just make a second way back for some reason, because I like to hit switches. And uh, just make sure you just make sure you do not get uh, you don't fall in that hidden pit because that will be the end of it. Anyway, hello, my name is Great Spin Attack. Nice to meet you. Just gonna keep spinning while cutscenes happen. The nice thing is you even get you get stunned during the cutscene, so it actually takes away your stun time. It doesn't like pause and then make you get stunned afterwards. Nope, you get stunned during the cutscene. It doesn't matter at all. So you turn on this torch. And nothing happens though if these spikes over here blocking the way down. So uh, as you might guess, we need to go ahead and take care of the second puzzle in order to get the way forward to show up. So, this one, god damn it. I hate these invisible pits. Uh, anyway, this one puzzle is a bit more tricky though because it involves timing. And that's not the easiest thing. So, uh, first of all, these bats are gonna be in the way, which is gonna be really annoying because we have to time ourselves across, across these blocks which will cause problems when's bat, when bat, bat, bats. Actually, no, I might still, I could have still made it if it weren't for the fact there's a pit there. So as you can see, okay, at least we cleared up the bats. Uh, it's a bit of a annoying puzzle that goes without saying. So avoid this. Wait for this to come across. We might actually have time here. Uh, this timed out decent, and yeah, you can cross the bridge. So as long as you time it right, uh, I would watch the top screen during that section. And start it about there with that with that last block, so that it has time to rotate around, so it'll reach you in time. It seems to work pretty well if you time it like that. Make sure you clear out the keys first, because as you can see, they will be a huge pain in your buttocks, and nobody likes that, especially not me. Hey, look! It's more skeletons. I hope they don't mind a great spin attack to the face. I didn't think so. As you can see, it's a pretty powerful technique, and I will abuse the heck out of it. Except for the fact that we're about to get an even more powerful technique very soon. Let me just say, the dungeon item in this dungeon is broken as heck. It's overpowered, it's just ridiculous, and I will show you why very soon. Hey look, you're a captain! Ow, rude. You're not worth, even worth using a great spin attack on. So welcome to the main floor of this area. We're not going to have much to do for now here though, because as you can see it's flooded. Very much like the Cobble Kingdom, where it's going to be a really similar concept with uh, the water. But uh, you can see there's a little pyramid thing over there. We'll deal with that later. For now, our only option is to head down. Uh, as usual, the water will uh, damage you and hurt you because Link cannot swim. He's like the first assassins from Assassin's Creed. Altier or whatever, he uh, just, just inability to swim. And GTA characters from back in the early days, so on and so forth, Just it's just a, a trend. Anyway, there's this switch here. We've seen this in the Temple of the Ocean King, but we can't do anything with it yet. There's also these guys. Even bombs won't hurt them. There's really nothing we can do about them either, so we'll avoid them and move upstairs because that's where our true... Uh, Realize. You can imagine they both revolve around the item we're about to get. Oh good, like likes. I haven't seen enough of you last episode. No, I missed you guys. I mean, you're just like likes. You, you, yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, you, you, you're by a treasure. You're totally a... F really? You know what? You know what? Whatever. 
Bye. It's not like it matters. Oh no! I've been wounded slightly. I only have 15... No, 14? 14. I only have 14 hearts. Heaven forbid you do half of one. I guess I... Actually, I guess I technically do have the power sword. You know what? Let's switch it out. It's, it's, we've done the power sword for a while. I like using this one because it doesn't make you stronger, so it doesn't make bosses stupid easy. And it doesn't make a... It also doesn't give you extra defense and make them stupid easy as well, but Courage is probably the most balanced of them all, even if it makes a squeaky sound every time you swing your sword, and it goes squeak, 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 and it's kind of annoying, but we were able to uh, deal with that and that, well, we're able, basically we're just going to have less power, which will make things a bit more interesting, I think, and we've used power a bit, let's switch it up. That's basically my logic there. So, Celia, being observant, I was always like, hey, this wish is rusty, and it probably won't bulge if you stand on it. Yeah, we figured it out the first time we saw that, and the second time, and the third time, possibly even the fourth time, Celia. Good job, way to be on the ball. Hey look, skeletons. Gee, I wonder what I'm gonna do here. Wouldn't possibly be the great spin attack, no, not at all. Are you gonna... I got you! Ha ha! I have defeated you, like like. Ugh, good riddance, I hate like likes. They're so obnoxious in this game. I mean, I guess I could just shoot them with a bow and make life like a lot easier. But here we go! We now have broken McBrokerson. It's the hammer. It's small, but my god, is it just stupidly overpowered in this game? I just hit my mic with my 3DS. Anyway, uh, I have no idea if that ever if it even shows up on the recorder or not. But anyway, we have a hammer, and that's all that matters because the final item in the game. And as you can see, it's basically a magic hammer that you can swing from any distance and pretty much attack anywhere you tap on instantaneously, and it kills most enemies in one hit, and it's just really broke. You can also just kind of hold it in a bit and then get a huge hammer, but really there's no reason to, and you can just tap and kill everything from any direction you want to. It's broken as heck, as we will see very soon. Just the hammer is stupidly powerful, and also it deals with the switches too, so boop! No more switch, and life is good. But yeah, prepare for basically the next 20 minutes of just non-stop hammer carnage, because that sounds about right for this dungeon. Also, the other mechanic is, uh, these, we, we've seen this, this mechanic before of the switch and the, the footprints. You stand on the footprints, and you hit the thing, and it's basically a catapult, and it takes you to new areas. So, very exciting. We also have these guys. As you can imagine, the Mr. Broken McBrokes and Hammer will just quickly dispose of them. Basically, you just tap things, and they die. That's just essentially how the hammer works in this game. It's... Yeah, this is why items are a bit better balanced, I think, in, uh, the, in, in Spirit Tracks. I mean, the last dungeon item you got was a puzzle item, essentially. This one, they're just like, oh, super broken stuff. So, that's the last treasure on that floor. All we got was the, uh, that was the, wait, we got, did we get a, no, that was a, what did we, we got money. That's what we got, didn't we? Or a treasure? I think there's a treasure in that. I don't remember what we got from that. But I'm pretty, if I remember correctly, that was a treasure, because the, there is a gem in this dungeon, uh, and we get that later. I thought we got the gem now, but no, we get that later. So, uh, it'll be the last of one of the, of the two gems, and the other one will actually be in the mail, because as you've seen the last few, uh, dungeons, we've had mail, essentially, and, uh, it'll be contain it contains a gem, and that'll contain the last of, uh, one of the gems. So basically, by the time we're up this dungeon, after we get the mail, and after we get the, uh, the gem in this dungeon, we'll have all of the gems, and we can upgrade all our fairies to max next episode, which will be very exciting. Uh, lots of power up. So, reminder of, hey, you can roll boulder boulders. We didn't just do that earlier in uh, the Cobble Kingdom in the Isle of Rune, but hey. So this uh, pyramid thing, very Yu-Gi-Oh-esque, I must say. Oh man, we're in an Egyptian theme. Better have some sort of pyramid. But uh, that's behind a locked door. We'll deal with that later. Hey, look! I have a hammer. It's broken, like I said. Enemies? Ha! <laughs> No longer a threat, I can just use my magical hammer to hit them from like 10 million miles away. Bow? Huh, I don't need a bow. If I can see them, I can hammer them. It's, well, I guess the bow is slightly longer range, but still, it's a hammer. It has no ammo. You can spam it forever. It's just stupidly overpowered in this game. I, I really cannot express that enough. Anyway, we have a sort of an actual hammer puzzle here where we have to hammer these switches, kill the enemies along the way. Basically just pound everything as you move around here. Try to be decently accurate so you can actually hit everything. There we go. Is that everything? Yeah, it is. Yep, because when you hit all the switches, the spike thing moves out of the way, and you can get off your ride. And here should be the last and final Courage Gem in the game. We now have 20 of those, and like I said, we'll get one in the mail, so we'll get our last Power Gem in the mail next episode. 
and life will be good. So look at that, 19, 20, and 20. Next episode, we'll have everything. We'll go to Spirit Island. Upgrades will happen. It'll be good times. But that'll happen next episode, because I'm going to wait till I get all three of them, and then just go on a fairy power-up spree. Equality. One can't be more powerful than the other for any length of time. No, they must all be equal together. It's important to maintain healthy fairy relationships. That's my excuse. Anyway, we head over here. Uh, we go kind of backtrack to where that uh, key was, and we can finally figure out what that pyramid does. Also, there's a random locked door here in another pyramid. More on that later. Anyway, we're going to head over this way, walk across the little spiny bridge thing. This is here, by the way, so because, uh, essentially, you'll see what happens. Because, note the bridge is here, we open the door here, and uh, with that we can hit this around, and this will lower the water. So, pretty much like the outside of the Cobble Canyon, we can raise and war lower water levels. And it'll cause uh, the bridges to essentially sink, so we can't cross the bridges while the water is lowered, but we can while it's raised. But because it's lowered, we can now access the, these areas down here. Here. Oh, hi, you're... Ow! Eat my hammer. Rude. So basically, it's just the kind of the way this dungeon works. We have to uh, raise and lower the water levels while solving hammer puzzles and so on and so forth. So, we need to open the path by changing these tiles to... Uh, they basically, as you can see, they flip from... Uh, they flip all the ones kind of... Uh, in a square around where you hit, and it flips them all uh, to, between circle and X's. Uh, we always want to have them be all circles, and, unless it says otherwise. So, just hit in the middle, hits all of them around. Intro to puzzle solved! Basically, it's just flip things around, get circles. Yay. So, now we head over here, and we uh, learn that, the, yeah, lowering the water level isn't going to be all we need to do. There's a reason there's a lot of these pyramids around. That's because, and also, the, note that it gives you arrows here, because a hint. Use your bow. It also flips it around. Because we need to raise the water level here so we can raise the bridge. And once we hit raise the bridge, we can head down here and continue. So, continue basically to another one of these puzzles. So, once again, we can make them all circles. Just hit everything but the middle, essentially, because the middle is already taken care of. So, we're just going to kind of do a thing like this. Uh, it's not going to be a good way to. Oops. Okay, if we hit this here, then hit this here. Nope. Okay, that works. I'm hitting it, like, too far up there. Okay. The shadow is deceiving me here. Okay. That worked. Essentially, if you hit it by the corner, it'll just flip the corner once. If you hit it on the side, it'll flip, you know, two or three, depending on what you do. And you can flip the two here. You can flip the two like this. So on and so forth. So that's kind of the key to that puzzle, is use the outside squares. Don't use the inside squares. Use the outside squares to manipulate things. It makes your life a lot easier. Until we get to a point where that, actually no, there isn't, I mean, the smart thing would have a point where that you actually have to manipulate them only with those squares, but no, the game doesn't do that. The reason we have to open this door, by the way, is so we can shoot this thing and lower the water level again, because without that, we won't be able to proceed because there will be water all over here. And that would be bad. This is just kind of your way back. We don't really care. Uh, nothing else really to do here besides, you know, collect the pots and head down to the basement too. I believe. Yes, Basement 2, Basement 2, which uh, is your usual sort of... I guess we already, we've already been down here, but... Just, you know, why the basement in all these dungeons just infinite pits? It's just kind of weird. Anyway, as you can see, we have another one of these puzzles. We also have a uh, Wibbly Wobbly here, who will probably tell us there's no treasure chest, and it, he does, because there's no treasure chest left on this floor, and that's okay, because the only one was that Courage Gem that we got uh, leftwards from here. But that's that's in the past. Anyway, this puzzle, this is not a circle yet, so we're going to want to make that a circle first, because after that we can just kind of manipulate the outside to uh, make our lives easier here. We're going to flip this, we're going to flip this, corner, corner, done. So, I mean, that's kind of the way the puzzle works in this game. Also, by the way, a note, uh, the big key door, the boss key door, whatever you want to call it, is uh, right here, so it's actually a little bit earlier than usual, which is... An interesting change of pace, it usually just puts the boss key door at the very end, but this one's kind of more in the middle. We're going to have to kind of make our way back there. Luckily, it's not going to be backtracking of any sort, it'll just take us back there when we're ready to do that, so... In the end, there's really no point, but that's okay. Let's read this puzzle. So, uh, this time is the one time that these block puzzles we don't actually have to make them all circles. It notes this true form over here, which is kind of like a backwards F sort of shape. This is actually the shape we're going to want to make in the puzzle that we're about to get very soon. Also, another pyramid thing right there. It's time to do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-
So you'll note, though, that the, the pyramid thing's down there. We can't shoot it from here with the bow, though, because uh, the bow only has so much range. So if you look to the right, we'll actually learn that, hey, we have one of these bow redirector things. Make it point downwards, shoot it, and voila, you may now raise the water level again. And uh, we can head to the right, which is exactly what we'll do. So now we can see uh, we need to make that true form, that backwards F thing in order to make the path open, because making it all circles will do nothing! Uh, but in case you're like, hey, I don't remember the path, you can just shoot this thing again, and it'll lower the water level again, and then you can see the, the thing pretty much right here. So really, there's no reason to memorize it! Could have had it just slightly more of the self, so we'd actually have a sort of puzzle, but nope, that would be too much for this game. So we need to make that thing, you know what, just, just for funsies though, let's make it, let's make the, uh... We can make it all circle just to demonstrate. Nope, doesn't do anything, gotta make it so that, uh... It's the F, which, honestly, if you just make it all circles, it's pretty easy to go from there, as you can see, because, once again, using the outside blocks just pretty much instantly solves the puzzle. Heaven forbid this game have puzzles of actual thought. Also, we missed this guy, we should probably, uh... Talk to him, he will have much to say. I'm talking really, really fast today, I'd like to point that out. Anyway, we have uh, three treasure chests to mark down, so this one actually has uh, treasures on this floor, one of which will be the boss key, which we actually could have seen earlier on, I kind of hyperly ran past it and didn't really uh, point it out, but we will only get back there, because we're going to be heading back to close to the beginning very soon, because as you can tell, by the way, at this point, we can't really backtrack back to the start. Once we jump down after we turn the water level, we pretty much lost our way to get back to the start. We've pretty much been past the point of no return for quite some time, and that's because once we return to that point, we're going to, uh, I'm just going to brace stock up on arrows, but once we return to that point, we'll actually be going towards the boss key then. You'll see when we get back, which we're actually heading back right now. It's not going to take very long. This is actually the bridge that took us, hi buddy, bye buddy. Um, that's the stair that took us to the path that eventually led us to the hammer, so interesting how that works. Gear yourself 100 rupees, Link's head once again phases through the wall because he just loves that wall. He really could not wait for a Link Between Worlds, he wanted to get ahead of the game there, but that's okay. Uh, we can now push this boulder and get introduced to a decently cool mechanic here where, uh, instead of using the catapult on us, we can use the catapult on the boulders instead. And launch them upwards so that we can get up on, on a high plane here and push it and break that boulder, so... Interesting how that works. Do not forget to get this key! There is a key in here. Uh, actually, I guess you could just fall down to the right there. So, if you forgot to get the key, as long as the water level isn't raised, and as far as I'm aware, there's not really an easy way to raise the water level at this point anyway. In fact, I'm pretty sure there's you can't just accidentally... Yeah, you it, without the water level raised, you can't actually accidentally uh, fall in a way that makes you have to redo the whole dungeon, so that's nice. Because if you need to get the key again, Pretty easy to just jump down there and grab it, so you can't really miss it. But here we go, we're back pretty much where we started. If you actually go up here, you see uh, this is pretty much, you know, back where we started, except this time the water level is now lower. So you can see the big key is going to be in that chest over there. It's the only, I mean, it, the big chests only have the dungeon weapon and the big key. So uh, we'll eventually go get that key. There's nowhere else we can really go because the game doesn't let you screw up, I guess. But now that the water level's lowered, we can jump down here, otherwise there'd be water here, we would pretty much drown by trying to go here. And we can head to the right. And we need this key because there's a random locked door just kind of in the middle of nowhere. Usually they're blocking like a staircase or something, this, no, this one's just kind of in the middle of a hallway. Whatever floats your boat game, I suppose. And now we have a game called Launch the Boulder. We can go down that staircase, but uh, we're going to want to do that after we get that big chest. Because we're going to need that boss key, and we're going to bring it down that door, because... Actually, I guess we could technically... Actually, no, I don't think we can backtrack because we jumped down a thing, so we can't actually get back to where the boss door was without hanging down that staircase over there and solving that puzzle. So, lots of ledges you can jump down this dungeon that will pretty much prevent you from backtracking, so... Very... just just basically follow the path the game leads you on. It basically holds your hand through this dungeon, like every other dungeon in this game. It's, it, the game's very hand-holdy. I've complained about this several times in this Let's Play. My opinion has not changed. There is just lots of hand-holiness going on here, and that's just the way things go, I guess, in this dungeon. So, we got the big boss key. Just jump your way down. For once, we actually have to kind of do stuff with the big key and not just instantly go to the dungeon boss door. Like that's kind of a thing. So, drop this key, because we actually have to fight off people, um, some skeletons while we're here. We don't have to fight them off, but they will throw bones at us and knock us off the platform. It'll be very unpleasant. 
You can, by the way, you can actually pick up rupees with the hammer as well. Like, even the boomerang and uh, grappling hook, which can pick up stuff from a distance, yeah, the hammer even outclasses those because it can grab things pretty much from any distance as well. The only thing the hammer really can't do is, uh, it can't go through walls or anything. You can't, like, tap over here and have the hammer go through. No, it doesn't go through walls, so you have to have a line of sight of whatever you're hammering. So, uh, the only weakness of the hammer. Otherwise, it's just pretty broken as heck, and look at that, we're already done with the dungeon. I mean, to be fair, you get the, the, the hammer pretty much at the very end of the game. We have, like, the Temple of the Ocean King, and that's essentially it before we're pretty much at endgame, so it's not like you have opportunity to really abuse the hammer. So, I mean, in, re in respect to that, you know, okay, yeah, it's broken, but who cares, we don't really have anything new to do. I mean, we've, we've even already completed the Temple of the Ocean King, essentially, so... There's pretty much nothing we can do to abuse the hammer, but it doesn't change the fact that it's just one of the most brokenly overpowered Zelda items in the history of The Legend of Zelda. It definitely is. So, uh, yeah, we head over here, and it's just boss time. And to be fair, to be fair, this boss is actually kind of cool. Kind of cool. The f it, it's cool, and then there's stuff I'll complain about, but it's still not terrible. The last couple bosses have not been terrible. So, there, at least there's... I mean, the, in respect... In, in retrospect, uh... The, the dungeon bosses, like, 3 through 6, have been pretty top-notch, actually, so, uh... It's one of the things I can't complain as much about. The bosses are pretty decent. If not, a little too easy, though, still. I mean, look at how the third boss went. It, we had to deal with its mechanic once, and then we were done with it. It was a little silly, but, uh... Here we go, time for the boss. So we got the portal back as we saw. I can take you back to the beginning if we want to for some reason. We do not, we want to continue forward. Ladies and gentlemen, the final dungeon boss of the game, of normal dungeons at least. And like I said, this one's kinda cool, cause it's pretty freaking huge. Meet Eox, he's basically a giant stone soldier. Unfortunately, the one from the Skyward Sword's a little cooler, but uh, I mean, this one came first, so I'll give it props. It shoots arrows at you, and it'll try to basically hammer your face in. So what you want to do is use these catapults, and then use your hammer in midair. Those red buttons, those are its weak points, and we are going to abuse it as much as we can. So just keep yourself in the air as much as possible, hammer those weak points, and uh, as you can see, you'll eventually hammer away the stone, and uh, life will be good. So what we want to do, though, the main thing that you want to keep in mind is there's hammer things that points on the back of him. So when he doesn't attack, run between his legs, confuse him, and use the opportunity to get to a catapult near here and start hitting the points in the back. The one in the back of the head is the hardest one to hit, so we're going to make sure to try to go for that one the most. Just because the ones in the front are easier, I try to go for the ones in the back uh, first. Is he, like, is he like shooting his teeth at us? Is that a thing? It's just kind of gross. I don't appreciate it. Ooh, got some good hits on the... Oh, I hammered his butt. He no longer has a butt. Mission success. Uh, watch out for the shockwaves, as you can see, they will still hurt you. You know what? I'm just gonna go up this way. Yay! So, just keep chipping away at him, and eventually you'll take care of all of his weak points, and life will be good. So, like I said, the back of his head, definitely the major one we're gonna want to go for. There we go, that's the hardest one to get, because you have very little time to actually hit it. Uh, there's a few points in the back of his arms. You know what? We can get the ones in the front, though, first, so... Get the ones in the arms here, get the ones in the legs... Ah! Uh, arrows! Rude. More arrows, really. It's not like those arrows are difficult to dodge. Can we actually get between his legs in time? He did. He's confused. And somehow he's shooting arrows at us still, despite not being able to see us. And there we go! All of the stone is gone. So that's uh, the first phase. Second phase, not much different. He basically gets more buttons. So, but this time we have to hit them all at the same... That surprisingly didn't work. Okay. Uh, by the way, he won't leave that center platform ever, so keep that in mind. Uh, oh, epic dodge. So you can see you can hit like a few of them, but no, you have to hit all of them at the same time for the next phase to be complete. So go up here, hit the two highest ones first, obviously, get the ones on the way down. And once you've hit all four, we will now break his body. And now all that's left is his head. So uh, this time we want to basically use the catapult here to get on top of him instead. Which, as you can see, you do not go too far off the catapult. The wait till he's pretty much right on you there. Jump up on him like so, using the cat. Wow, I barely, he almost kind of went past me there. So just keep hitting them, eventually you'll get knocked off. Uh, if you want to avoid taking damage, you can leave, but the problem is if he's actually on the catapult, you can't do much. And this is where the annoying part of the boss fight is, because you pretty much have to slowly but surely redirect him away from where the uh, 
the catapult is without actually being able to see him because the camera the way the camera works. And then you have to kind of get him in position all over again without him getting on it. Please let me get on you. No. Oh, I made it. And then you just keep chipping away at him, and he actually only takes two rounds. Okay, interesting, because I wanted to test this out. That's why I switched from a cur or from power to courage for my spirit. Uh, no, it still took two rounds, so I guess the extra power boost from your sword does not affect boss duration, because with the power sword, he still took two rounds, and here he still took two rounds, so it didn't actually make a difference. Um, which is weird, because, you know, I was like, oh, maybe he only took two rounds because... The power sword did double damage, and no, it's not like how it works in Link's Awakening. You can't do double damage to bosses, apparently. Interesting. I didn't know that. I wanted to figure that out. So, uh, power sword does not actually do d extra damage to bosses. That only took two rounds, and uh, that's just the way the boss goes. Heck, for the rule of hey, bosses can go in stages of three. Nope. These game, this game has like stages of one and two because got to make the game super easy for some reason. I mean, it's still a good game. It's still a Zelda game. It's just, compared to other Zelda games, not as much. But there we go, an extra two minutes. We're up to 24 minutes, I believe. Actually, I'm going to check this because I'm curious. Uh, we are up to 24 minutes indeed. So the max is 25. One of the chests we have, one of the uh, treasure map pieces we have will actually be uh, a time thing, I think. And then we're going to need that to get the uh, max speed record reward, which we're going to try to go for. And speaking of, uh, of rewards, we got a heart container. Which leaves one heart left, and that one is the fishing heart, which is something I want to take care of when I take care of all those treasure maps. So, uh, I have a schedule in mind on how we're going to do these collectibles and get everything. It's going to be kind of a bit of a strange schedule of sorts. I'll explain it when we get to that. It's still going to be a couple episodes before we get to this whole final section, collecting a thon thing, showing up the secrets of the Temple of the Ocean King and the treasure maps. But we'll get to that later. More on that uh, in a couple episodes. For now, we go ahead... By the way, in case you're curious, uh, because I always like to do this, uh, kind of head over here and be like, I'm gonna catapult into the stairs! Whee! And you can't. It stops just short, which is unfortunate. A wasted opportunity for hilariousness! Oh well, we can't have it all. So we head over here, and, uh, there's really nothing to the sides, as always. But you know me, I like to show off every nook and cranny because you guys like it. Oh, it looks like there's something over there, but nope, there is. I was like, wait, was that wrong? No, of course not. So, meet King Muto. He's pretty much the typical roly-poly king that you find in every Zelda game, but there you go. He's a guy, he's still very Egyptian. Hey, Egyptian themes, they have giant stone colossus statues, right? That's a thing. It's not like there's other lore you can pick from when you're trying to make an Egyptian theme, and clearly pharaohs look like this. I don't know. I mean, they tried. It's just it's just kind of weird, I guess. Anyway, we defeat the monster. It was actually a robot after all. And, uh, well, we need to help the Ocean King. So give me your medal, boy. Give me your sacred medal. The Aquanine, the treasure of the Cobble Kingdom, is ours. We've gotten it from the ghost. The ghost has given it up. Give up the ghost, et cetera, et cetera, phrases and stuff and things. Looks like there's like a doorway back there. Is there a doorway back here? Kind of looks, I guess that's just his tomb. That's just where his corpse is. Or maybe that's where his corpse is. Who cares? We got metal. Yay, metal! And with that, the Aquanine is ours, and we have the ability to get the sword we need to defeat Bellum. So, very exciting. We've gotten all the MacGuffins, guys. We are all MacGuffined up. In fact, look at the collection screen again. Look at all these MacGuffins. So many MacGuffins. We pretty much have everything in terms of, like, MacGuffins, and we just need an extra minute, an extra heart. All the stuff on the right is just mail stuff that we, doesn't really matter, like prize postcard, the Lord of the Jolene, the Beetle tickets, which we spent already, so who cares? We pretty much have everything except for one minute on the clock and one heart container, which we'll take care of fairly soon, so... And, I mean, we already know how to get them. One's in a treasure under the sea, one's from the fishing quest. Not hard to get those, so... This game is wrapping up pretty quickly. So, uh... Yay, we've made a dead guy. Okay, you're saying the same thing. I already took your treasure. Go back to bed. Forever. You're dead. Goodbye, mister. So with that, guys, ladies and gentlemen, the last dungeon of the game is complete. We've gotten the last MacGuffin. In the next episode, we take those medals to Zows. We make ourselves a nice, shiny new sword that's capable of defeating evil. Hint, it's not the Master Sword that would be copying other Zelda universes.
And Link already has one of those. We need a different sword that can defeat evil. Is that... Okay, that was like, that's our fairy shadow. I'm like, that's just weird. Stop doing that, Celia. You're, you're confusing me. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next episode for more Phantom Hourglass. We'll get ourselves a cool sword. Bye-bye.